I want to bring to your attention today, Minister, the issue of the takeover of the Dublin uh, Airport Falchivar earlier on this year and the impact on the ten former members of staff. I'm very conscious that this is an ongoing issue and it is somewhat sensitive. So therefore, I just want to make note that there are proceedings already underway with the Labour Court or the Labour Relations Commission. So instead, I want to focus my, my, my issue today in relation to the role of the DAA in this issue. My main areas of concern are the workers here, many of whom I've met and live in my own constituency. I also think there is a bigger issue here of the Dublin Airport Authority's involvement in contracts in the airport in future in particular. The Minister might be aware the operation of the bar was taken over by a company earlier on this year called SSP and subsequently closed. It then reopened under a new name called Angel Share with an expanded food service element. Essentially, Minister, the former staff of the bar were told to apply for new positions in the new bar. Those who successfully completed an assessment were to be given new job titles with significantly changed terms and conditions. Without going into too much detail, not all were offered new jobs, and so there are redundancy proceedings underway currently. Three workers out of the ten are on a month's trial on their old pay rates, but it, 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 is not, it is not yet sure what rates they will be offered after their trial period ends later this month. The new positions in the bar are being offered at €9.60, whereas some of the bar staff in the old Falcha bar were on €17 Euro and over. This is a significant change, Minister, in pay rates offered for the same job, essentially. Minister, essentially my fear is that we have a huge number of service sector workers in the airport, and what has happened to these workers could be repeated elsewhere at a later date if such a changeover happens again. I appreciate that passenger numbers are down and businesses are adjusting to this, but I don't think that a change of operator and new job titles should essentially mean this type of changes to pay rates. Apart from the impact on these 10 workers, there is the possibility that the very same will happen to other airport workers if the operation of other bars or services are transferred. I think this is an issue that the DAA need to look at seriously. I think it is not enough for the DAA to simply handle tenders and not have an interest in the rights of the workers in the airport. I would ask you, Minister, to bring this up with the DAA and the Minister for Transport in particular. Workers in the service sector already have precarious job conditions and many have to work on sociable hours as we know. And at the very least, I think these workers deserve respect but also the support of the DAA when situations like this arise. Thank you, Minister. Thank you, Pierre Luck. Thank you, Minister. Thank you. Four um, minutes. Just to firstly, if I may thank uh, the Deputy for raising this matter. Uh, I understand that the issues involved concern the outcome of a tendering process for the running of a bar in Terminal 1 uh, of Dublin Airport. I understand uh, that the Dublin Airport Authority has confirmed that the tender process for the outlets in question was conducted uh, through the official journal of the European Union system for public procurement and was fully compliant with all guidelines. The, the tender documentation for the outlets in question stated that the transfer of undertakings legislation may apply and advised uh, potential tenders to seek their own advice in terms of you know, uh, TUP legislation, transfer of undertakings. The restructuring currently underway at a number of the outlets is a matter for the operators in question. And, and I, I, I'm not, I respectfully say to the deputy that I'm not privity, privy to the details of transfer, transfer or the parties involved. Uh, but one cannot but have uh, sympathy or, or empathise with uh, the persons involved uh, in this dispute and without fudging the issue but seek, in seeking to give an honest answer to the, the deputy, it would be my firm suggestion that the, the industrial relations machinery does need to come into play in respect of this particular issue. Uh, and I would be hopeful uh, that both sides would agree to a process where the industrial relations machinery could be utilised to try and uh, you know, come to a resolution to the satisfaction of both parties in this instance. And while I have a very detailed response here in relation to uh, you know, the rights of employees in relation to uh, you know, transfer of undertakings. I won't. I don't think it's necessary to go into that. But I would be strongly supportive of 
the idea that the labour uh, relations machinery should be utilised in this instance. Uh, and I would be very surprised if, if there hasn't been a move in that regard, uh, you know, presently. Thank you, uh, Cahirlo, Cabinet Cabinet. Minister. And Minister, I appreciate your honesty and I appreciate you not reading the extended um, uh, uh, response that was, was asked to be, to be uh, given back to myself. I think both myself and yourself understand the situation which is at hand up there. No laws have been broken here. We respect that. Every, th every, I, every I has been dotted and every T has been crossed. But the, there's, there's a sense of natural justice here, Minister, which has completely gone out the window. And the fact is that... Um, you know, I think this is an issue that needs to be monitored in cases like this. We, the D Dublin Airport is a huge employer in North Dublin, one of the largest employers, um, and there are a lot of people in the, in the neighbouring neighbourhoods who rely on income from these. And these are people who have worked the most unsociable hours so that we can get the planes at the times we want to get them, and have been essentially told through a legitimate process that uh, you can come and work for us, but you can work for half the price than what you were previously employed under. And I think something there needs to be, to be uh, assessed. And I do understand that we are constrained by the legislation and there are processes to deal with this, but the fact is no laws have been broken here, Minister. But what I would ask is that the Minister for Transport, who does have responsibility for the DAA, perhaps, and also within your own remit, Minister, as well, that this be brought back to the DAA, um, at least so that it, it is acknowledged that there is some sort of a system going on here, um, albeit a very transparent system, but one that has, has resulted in, in a very disfavouring um, outcome for workers who have given, you know, some of them, you know, somewhat five, six, seven, some of them ten years of, of, their, of their life uh, to this. And to be told that 17 euros down to 960, where some of these have families and so on, just isn't fair. And the fact, Minister, just I'll, I'll leave it on this point, and, uh, because I'm very sensitive to, 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 to the fact that there are ongoing discussion, discussions uh, taking place. To, the fact that seven out of the ten workers who were working for this company before it was transferred over didn't pass the test to do pretty much the same job and these coincidentally happen to be some of the people who were at the higher end of the pay scale in the first place, says something about the morality of the particular company who has decided to carry out this. Um, I think they have used the, the legislation that's in place um, as a type of a smoke screen in my own, um, I suppose, uh, I suppose looking into this, um, and they have broken no laws, but they have used the legislation in order to create a sense that they have made a fair decision. Um, and to the final point, Minister, these particular jobs that people were told to go on them uh, to, to reapply for were also, I, as far as I know, were also advertised in, in the public domain, quoting that no experience was necessary for these jobs. So there is something not right at the moment, Minister. And finally, just to reiterate, I do uh, respect your response and that I really do appreciate that you didn't read out the response that was given to you. And finally, that I would urge that the Minister for, for Transport in particular, who does have responsibility over DAA, that he does raise this directly with DAA because this may open the valve for what would be what could become you know a 960 euro job for everybody who works in the airport uh, uh, in the foreseeable future thank you Minister. thank you deputy minister I, I i agree with everything that the deputy has said i mean let's be frank and honest about it and i think that the issue that is at hand here is the one of corporate social responsibility and we i know we bandy that term around from time to time and we can you know use that expression quite easily but if you have a transfer of undertakings here uh, and i think you've the deputy has used the word morality there is a strong sense here of an obligation on the part of spp you know where they've you know, taken over a facility in what is effectively a state entity, if you will, uh, to ensure that, you know, the, the rights of the workers there uh, are, are vindicated, or at least that there is a recognition of the experience of the existing staff who go into the new undertakings. I think in this instance, though, and, and we, we recognise that no law has been broken, but there is a certain corporate social responsibility, and I would hope that common sense will prevail and that the, the extensive machinery of the state in relation to labour relations you know, could be applied in this particular instance. I would be very hopeful of that. And I'm, I think it's important also, though, if I may state this, Cahir, look, that it's important that these issues are raised on the floor of this House also, because it does send a signal back to these entities 
you know, that you know, these matters are being looked at you know, by government and that there is a consciousness in this House of the issues that the Deputy raises.